Hello. Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> we are back after a week off to build the anticipation. We are yep. back with Ozzy. How have you been? A couple of weeks I'm, off. I'm. I'm. I'm just going to hijack this. Let's not focus on me. There is something that um, Rosa would like to introduce to everyone else. That she's just <laughs> introduced to me. That like, however good this cooking is, this will be the star of the show. So, Rosa. Without further ado, would you like to introduce us to someone? We have a special guest with us here today. It's so Chidi. Ah! My brand new kitten. Oh my God. He is just adorable. He weighs one kilogram and is 16 Aww. weeks old. <laughs> so exciting. And he loves carrots, so he can't wait. Whoop. Uh, well, lucky we're using that as an ingredient today. For you Amazing. i'll just do i'll just do a quick spotlight video so that everyone can see him nice and clean hey hello he loves the attention but yeah <laughs> so really nice so he's going to be with us today which is great yay i don't even mind being no, second place for that that's i'm happy to be left behind because of that that's fine that's acceptable anyway <laughs> um Right, so your second the second main event today is obviously the cooking, um, mm -hmm. and you're going to be joining me for a what I like to call a recipe lab. It's something that I did in my old job as a development chef, um, where we would kind of just come up with stuff. So there are no sort of rep, written recipes. I've kind of got an idea of what I'm doing. Um, we're going to see if it works out. It should do. I hope it does. It might do. It might not. But that's kind of part of the job. Um, and so join me whilst we make two types of hummus. One with, or try, attempt to make two types of hummus. One with uh, beetroot and one with carrots. Um, also going to try and make some flatbreads and like a nice sort of savory granola that we can uh, sprinkle on top, which will just give it a bit of crunch, bit of a, make it a bit nicer um, texture-wise. So we're kind of going to, yeah, that, that's kind of the plan. Um, I, I say plan very loosely. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm making it up as I go along, but that's, I gather that's part of the appeal. So um, you guys got to watch me panic for a bit and good. see if anything comes out of it. Chidi's up for it. Fantastic. Well, if Chidi's happy, then I am. So uh, we're going to start with, if you want to come over to the Aussie cam, I'm going to start with a little bit of a flatbread dough. Um, so this here, let me just make some space. This here is just going to be a really simple dough. Um, and this is something that I think, if you're going to cook something without a recipe, um, a basic dough is actually something that's really, really useful. Um, because you learn to appreciate the texture and the, the way that a dough feels or the way that a dough should feel. Um, that a recipe can get you close, but it can't get you all the way. So it's a really good way if you're not as confident in the kitchen or you're just starting out, um, then, then it's a really good way of... Uh, let's move that into view. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at two screens at once. <laughs> There we go. Um, so in there, I've just got some plain, uh, sorry, not plain flour. I've got some bread flour, which is um, flour that is that has got um, a, a higher gluten content than plain flour. Um, so gluten is what makes bread stretchy and what makes celiacs cry. It is um, a protein which is found, thank you, uh, it is a protein which is found in wheat. Um, and when you work it, when you stretch it, when you knead it, which is what we're going to do, and I'll show you how to do that, and you're actually going to make it more elastic -y. Um, you can you can feel the stretch. You can feel it. That's why it's such a good, uh, good, good like recipe because um, you have to feel it. I think the camera's frozen there, hasn't it? It's, oh, just, on, it's just on you. Oh, yeah, it has. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, bear with me a second. I think I know Are we going to be using the pomegranate? Or... We will be, of course. We will. Uh, we're going to be using everything that's in frame. Is that working now? That's back. Amazing. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, if you want to take it back to the Aussie cam, that's the main one. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to be using we're going to be using that to garnish, um, and I want to show you something cool with the pomegranate. Um, so in there, yes, that's just strong bread flour, otherwise known as bread flour or strong flour, um, and that has just got a higher gluten content than regular plain flour, so it'll become a bit stretchier as we need it, and the gluten will align in a way that it becomes stretchy and chewy, and that's where you get your nice chewy texture for the bread, as opposed to something like a cake where you use plain flour where it kind of crumbles a bit more easily because there's less gluten in the flour. That's basically the reason. Um, so in there, I've just got the flour and I've got a bit of salt. I'm also going to put in, this is a flatbread, so it doesn't use yeast. Um, otherwise, you can make 
flat, uh, flatbreads with yeast. Um, they are delicious. They have a slightly more complex and developed flavor, which is nice. Um, but they do, of course, take a bit of time to let the yeast ferment. I'm just going to use a little bit of baking powder um, as my leavening agent. It's not totally necessary, but it just helps give it a little bit more of a, of a lift. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add in... Firstly, I'm going to find a jug, which I have, and then I'm going to add in some water. And I say some water because I don't know how much I'm going to need. Um, and this is kind of the point with, uh, with those, that it's, it's done on feeling, really. Um, and I'm just using a whisk to make sure everything is combined nicely. It's got nothing to do with putting in air or anything. It's just the best instrument for getting a mixture mixed up. So in goes a little bit of, I'm going to use, start off with a, start off with a, just a regular butter knife because you'll see why in a second. I'm going to make a little, I don't know if you can see that. Over there. I've just made a little oh, yeah, hole in the middle, see. a little well. And I'm just going to pour in a little bit of like room temperature water. Start with a little bit. Start to just give it a mix round. And I can tell that it needs more. I'm also going to put in a little bit of olive oil. This is mainly for flavor, um, but it also just helps keep the bread from drying out as quickly. Um, Cause of course it is a flat bread. Uh, it's got a lot of surface area to lose moisture. So we want to just make sure that's going to stay or not dry out, not go too stale too quickly. Um, you can see now the texture, it's still kind of quite crumbly. Um, we need this to come together as one coherent dough. So add a little bit more water. Now with uh, regular bread dough recipes, um, they often say don't add in all the water at once, which is completely correct. You shouldn't. Um, every flour is slightly different because they're all, you know, it's a natural product. It, 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 like every fruit is different. Every, every bit batch of uh, flour is slightly different. They all accept slightly different amounts of water before they can become a dough. So this, again, is something that is really, really useful to learn to do um, by feel and by hand. And it's something that when I sort of first started cooking, um, something that a skill that I, I learned and it's it's really come in handy for if you're making bread in a pinch and you kind of don't really have time to weigh stuff out you kind of just shove stuff in a, a mixture and you can just tell straight away by the feel of it by the look of it um it's got me out of a lot and it's also just it's if you I want feel to understand like cooking. if I did that it wouldn't go to plan <laughs> but that's the thing it's it's about practice you know this is this is this must be like the 10,000th time I've made dough um wow. so I've got the benefit I've got oh, you know probably not how many, many but, times you know, a day do you make dough uh 500 minimum but you know like I, I have i have the experience of, of and i have the benefit it's very easy for me to say like yeah just it's got to look like that um this is something that you really try for yourself and it's, it's kind of like a lot speaks to a lot of like a lot of food that i cook and or that i encourage others to cook um i really encourage people to uh or try to encourage them to to really just get a feel for it and 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 have a bit of confidence to um to kind of do do what they think is right and try it out and, and see what works. And, and you'll, you'll discover, um, firstly, a lot of things that you might like um, and, and food preparations that you might like, which is a really great thing about cooking is that it's very personal. So if you, if you experiment with something and find out you like it, then great, you've got a recipe for life. Um, also, like you can find out alternative ways of doing things, nice little cheeky shortcuts, um, stuff like that. You get that just from experimenting and, and from being bold and, and brave in the kitchen, really. Um, you don't get that by reading a recipe. You, you get that by, well, most of the time, you get that by, you know, hands-on experimentation and uh, being, being prepared to, to have a bit of failure in the kitchen as well. I've, I've definitely made dishes where um didn't go so well and the people I was cooking for weren't too happy. But, you know, I learned something along the way. So, yeah. Know, I've, I've shared with Ozzy before um, my cooking disasters um, <laughs> that I have gone through. And I just think it is really important for us all to be honest that it doesn't always go to plan. So comment below your worst cooking disaster yes, absolutely. Um, that you have ever had because we're not alone. Um, I may <laughs> have made not. gnocchi that looked like, um, I don't even know. It was, it was <laughs> meant to be spinach and it looked like aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Like aliens. Alien, aliens, vomited 
Um, so, you know, everyone makes mistakes, but like you said, trial and error, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Totally that. Um, Make sure you share with us. Yeah. And, you know, have at the end of the day, like, have fun with it. Like, cooking shouldn't necessarily just be a do this, do that, do this, do that. I mean, I understand that, you know, at times you definitely just want to have the safety and convenience of a recipe. Like, I totally understand that. Um, but, you know, like, when you've got a, a spare afternoon or as we have at the moment, we have nothing but spare time at the moment for most of us. Um, then really just like experiment and have a go and, and try stuff because um, you'll really be surprised with with just how actually simple some some foods are they just require a bit of practice um and you can do some really really great things um so at the moment as you can see and i'm slightly getting breathless because i'm doing this i am uh, <laughs> i am kneading the bread um what you're doing here like i said earlier bread's got this has got gluten in it um which becomes stretchy you can see that's kind of coming stretching out but you see it's it's slightly breaking there um so it's not quite developed um, this is a thing that usually you either give this job right here to a chef that you don't like, or you just put it in the machine. Either way. Um, so where's your funny. machine? Do you not have one at home? I do, I do, but I figured in the uh, spirit not of making everyone it does. easy and accessible, exactly, and especially for, <laughs> for this amount of uh, for this amount of dough that I'm making, which isn't a lot. This would probably make one or two flatbreads just to show you. But the, the same, the idea I'm is the same. You scale it up. <laughs> It doesn't um, actually doesn't fit in the machine I have. You need to have quite a big batch to to work in there. So whoop. that's the dangers of kneading. Um, if you have a big battery of feeding a lot of people, then by all means use a machine if you have one. Um, but you can you, you can do it by hand. You might want to set aside a bit of a workout. That's uh, you know that that will wipe you out for the day. So don't go on any big runs beforehand or anything like that. Um, there you go. So that is pretty much where I want it. It's still fairly tacky, which is fine. If it gets on your hands, you can kind of just rub them together. And a lot of that will fall off. If it gets too sticky, you add a bit of flour. If it gets too dry, you add a bit of water. Um, it can stick to your hands a little bit. It's better to have it slightly wetter than slightly drier. Um, but that's, that's not a problem. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it in a bowl. I'm just going to leave that in that uh, bowl there just to rest up a little bit whilst I get on with some other stuff. And I'll uh, give my hands a quick wash and I'll catch my breath a second. Uh, have, we had any, <laughs> have we had any, any comments about um, cooking disasters yet? Yeah, no, we haven't. No one's feeling that willing to share their oh, stories, which guys. is a shame. Yeah. <laughs> um, Come on. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a very important thing. So um, I, I do have some stories. So this, 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 when I say my friend, I genuinely mean my friend. I don't mean me. Um, <laughs> my friend, what? <laughs> I like one hundred percent. By now, dodgy it sounds. Um, so my mate was he was cooking for a wedding, um, and the couple had asked for like beef fillet, uh, which is beautiful and expensive cut of meat. If you've never had it, very very expensive, but um, equally delicious. And asked for it to be asked for it to be rare. Very bad rare. for the environment, though. It is very bad for the environment, but it is also delicious. So you've got to balance those two things in life, I think. Anyway, um, no, I'm not serious. Anyway, um, so yeah, they 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 asked for this beef to be cooked nice and rare, um, which is fine. Obviously, the, the problem is that you can only take it to a certain temperature, and then beyond that, it stops being rare. Um, and he was doing this wedding for, I think, about 200 people. Um, and he completely forgot about the beef in the oven um, and overcooked it. And so this wedding couple were very, very annoyed to find out that their expensive ingredients had, uh, oh had been overcooked God. and he ruined what it for 200 people. What a disaster. What did they do last minute? <laughs> um, I asked him and he said he had contingency. I don't know what that means. He must have had a spare or he must have pulled in favours or I don't know. I... I, I <laughs> I suspect he might not be welcome to cook at any future weddings there. I don't know. Um, wow. That's really, to be fair, that's, that's really bad. So but, I think. But it just goes to show, right, that mistakes happen all the time in kitchens. And it's not about avoiding mistakes or, I mean, obviously try to avoid them, but it's, it's more about how you respond to the mistakes um, than, than trying to outright avoid them because they always are going to happen eventually. Um, so yeah, but that's that's part of the fun of cooking is you know you're not you you know you're you're making yourself lunch. You're not changing the world. You're not feeding someone's 
Um, you're not you're not making uh, you're not making beef for two hundred wedding guests. Um, you know, you're just you're just making yourself a nice lunch or a snack or something. Like, don't you know? You bite the food; the food doesn't bite you. All right, so don't be too scared of it. Uh, what I've got now? I've That's got my cheat sheet there. I like that. Yeah, you can use What's that. On What's on your cheat sheet? It's all the stuff I've got to do because I keep losing track. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm going to make now oh, is a savoury granola. Um, it's exactly the same as a sweet granola, just with less sugar, obviously. Um, and I'm going to be using, like, the point of a granola is that you have loads of seeds and nuts um, that are basically bound with some kind of oat. Um, so would you of... recommend this for any meal of the day? Um, you could easily adapt this to however you want. I'm just going to make this one, which works quite well with savoury. Um, all granolas have a bit of sugar in them anyway, because it helps them bind. Um, I'm also going to be using an egg, uh, egg white, not a yolk, egg white, um, which again is optional if you don't eat eggs for whatever reason. It just helps to clump it a little bit better. It's not totally necessary. It's barely recognizable when you eat it if you're not that bothered, but I, I quite like it. It just helps to bind it into little clusters. Um, a granola is just oats, basically, with some kind of seed or nuts. Um, you could very easily make it uh, sweet or something you'd have your breakfast or you can have it uh, savory. I've had savory granolas with um, with dishes before. That's kind of where the idea for this one came. Um, and I'm going to be using I'm going to be using a mixture of sunflower. I've I basically raided my pantry and uh, found whatever seeds I've got lying about. So sunflower seeds, uh, golden linseeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, importantly, I think they're really, really nice when they toast off especially. Um, and of course, oats, like on Hala. Sesame like on holla, you can also put, you could also put poppy seeds in this, um, and on bagels, and on bagels, <laughs> and on bagels, very much so. Um, but the point is, like, it's very much uh, so long as you've got the oats of the sugar, um, and or, or honey in some cases, and and uh, you can use egg whites. That's optional, but I like to use them. Um, you can really put whatever you want, and it's it's really not a not a huge issue. Um, so it's, again, it's just an idea. It's not it's not prescriptive i'm not telling you you have to do this um what am I doing? I want, yeah i want whites in there right it's a lot of brain power involved in splitting eggs so egg whites come out Is that showing up? Yep. and egg yolks and shell i'm not using for the moment but they can go there i don't know can you see i've got my whites in there and all i'm going to do is give them a little whisk up just so they get a little bit frothy. Um, I'm not looking to make meringue. But... <laughs> so if you just carried on, it would be meringue. It, exactly. Um, it would be meringue. You want to add sugar if you're going to make it into meringue, but I'm just looking for a bit of froth. That's all I want. It's just going to help it spread out a little bit easier. That's it. That's all I want from it. Um, and what I'm going to add now is, again, if you don't have uh, honey, you can use sugar. That's fine if you don't eat honey for whatever reason, but I'm just putting in a little bit. You do need a bit of something sugar in there because that will help it kind of stick together in clusters. Um, so but it, but you're putting less in than you would if it was going to be a sweet. Absolutely. Sugar. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the, the sugar and the honey there is, is there for, for structure as well as a little bit of sweetness. Um, also putting in a bit of salt, of course. Um, and something that I really, really love putting in um, savory foods um, is actually a bit, a drop of soy sauce. Um, just not much, but just a tiny drop. Um, it's really full of some uh, compounds and flavorings that, that are very savory in nature. Um, obviously, if you had soy sauce before, you'll know it's, it's a very savory flavor. Um, and I'm just using, it, just using it a drop just to slightly enhance it. Um, not not a huge amount. You won't you won't know it's there. Is kind of the point, but you'll <laughs> you'll miss it if it you'll miss it if it wasn't. Um, um, because uh, Lauren Kalis is actually a avid um, soy sauce fan, so ah. she'd be very happy to hear that. But well, I'm an avid um, Lauren Kalis fan. I am I am a bit scared sometimes at the things that she puts soy sauce on. Um, yeah, I mean, my brother particularly is someone who will put soy sauce on any and everything. Um, I think they're probably, he's probably crossed, crossed a few culinary lines. But again, that's why you <laughs> where got do you draw? Where do you draw your line? 
<laughs> but again, like that's 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 for you to experiment and to find out with. You know, like don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't do it. Um, and experiment, try around with it. You'd be surprised. Like some people, some people like some really really weird stuff, and that's fine. But they didn't know it without finding it out themselves. Like they've got to experiment to find it out. <laughs> um, so but yeah, that's, funny. that's neither here nor there. But yeah. So just one yeah. drop. Of, just yeah, yeah, just a, just a, just a tiny just a tiny drop. Um, you're not going to know it's there, basically, but it's it's it just adds a, a certain je ne sais quoi, as the French would say. How good is it that this week we can actually have a conversation? Um, I know it's it's amazing the things time. you can do with good internet. Yeah, it was quite fun a couple of weeks ago when there was a thirty second delay between me speaking and you hearing me. It's pretty crazy, wasn't it? But yeah, this is all feeling good. We're, very we're now exciting. talking the technology we have access to these days. I know. Unbelievable. I know. We're I'm learning. A few more oats. Again, you'll notice I'm not really, uh, not really measuring this. I'm going by eye. I'm going by feel. Um, granola is really difficult to mess up. Um, you kind of can put in any sort of. Texture. I mean, you could even make go so far as to basically make a flapjack and then crumble that up. Um, and if you know if you ever made flapjacks before, you'll know just how easy they are and just how forgiving they can be. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about granola. Um, I'm kind of going by feel again. I know it's got raw egg white in it, but I'm a maverick, and that tastes great. So I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is just put that on a tray. Pardon the noise of grocery paper. Oops. And just tip that on there. There we go. And I've just got my oven. I've had that on preheated to about 150 degrees. And I just want to give that, uh, I, I don't know, let's, let's start with five minutes. Let's check it after five. It won't need long. You just want to slightly, you want to set the egg firstly. Um, and you want to just slightly toast all the nuts and seeds that are in there. Um, just to just to really aid with the flavor. So that's going to go in for about five minutes. I'm going to check it. It might need longer. Um, I don't really know. That's kind of the point of the stream is we're going to find out together. Um, so that that's basically the granola done once that's all cooked. Um, what I'm going to move on to now is the hummus, the star of the show. So mm. my idea for this was to basically um, inspire people, inspire the audience who are watching to kind of come up with your own different flavors hummus is a really really i mean we all i'm pretty sure we all love hummus on the stream um I, i'm probably within good authority to say that um <laughs> but it really is one of those canvases that you can you can put so many different flavors so many different vegetables so many different uh other dips alongside it or you can dip things into it it's 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 a multi-purpose multi-purpose condiment i say um so really use this as a guide but don't follow it don't have to. What I've got there is I've done it just pre-stream just to save a bit of time because it's not hugely interesting. So I did it did it just out of the way. Ooh. I've got um Here's got one I right made here. earlier. And exactly, here's my blue people moment. Um so <laughs> I've got whoops, go that in That looks delicious. Go. I've got just some carrots that I've peeled and chopped up really rough and ready. Um I've also put a bit of cumin on them. You could put whatever spice or any spice you want, it doesn't really matter. I but think it would be nice with cumin. It's very important in hummus. Yes, okay. and, and it goes very well with carrot, of course. Um, cumin and carrot is kind of a, and coriander as well, is a very good, very good combination. Um, so the point is, it is some amount of roasted vegetable. This is beetroot right here, and I've just done it with salt, both both just with salt and pepper and carrot and cumin and beetroot. Um, use whatever you want. Honestly, like you can really go, you can really go wild with it. You can use red pepper, onion. Um, I can't even think. I don't know. You could. <laughs> That's the point. You can, you can kind of kind of use whatever you want. Um, it's really up to you. Like, don't again. Just take this as a guide and go by feel. Like, if you don't like beetroot, don't cook beetroot. Um, funnily enough, I know a lot of people. It's, it can be a polarizing ingredient. Um, I don't so. have any strong opinions on beetroot either way. Oh really? Yeah, wow. I'm quite like meh about it. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, Whereas so, carrots, I love carrots. Yeah, I mean, carrots are just, you know, universally delicious. Um, especially when you get different colored ones. You can get um, red, yellow, 
obviously the orange purple carrots as well um you also get black carrots um funnily enough but they all taste the same they all look different they're, they're wonderful if you've got the um like the varieties of baby carrots you can have them all in the dish they look wonderful um but i'm going to be showing you a really simple cheats method with hummus which is using a blender um if you uh elsewhere you could of course use a pestle and mortar but it will take you forever so probably probably you know leave it to a blender if you've got one or a food processor or, or also um so i'm just going to add in a roasted veg and then oh make sure i get carrot in there you always want to go if you're going to use the same blender it's fine to use the same blender for both of them, but always go. If you're going to cook beetroot, make sure that goes in last because it will color whatever you put in next. I don't mind a bit of carrot that's getting into the beetroot, but a bit of beetroot in the carrot will turn the whole thing red. Um, so just be careful and mindful of that. Uh, also a bit of garlic, of course, because garlic is delicious. And I will challenge anyone who says otherwise. So many things that garlic goes well in. Um, yeah, my grandmother doesn't like garlic. I don't really understand, but you know, oh my I know. God. I know. I just found that out last week, and I'm uh, pretty heartbroken to say the least. Um, so you know, there you go. Anyway, um, that's quite sad. Also got chickpeas again. I'm not really measuring this out. I'm kind of just going by eye. You use whatever you've got to hand. It's hummus. You can't really go wrong. So just shove that all in there. We want this about three quarters full with chickpeas. Also helps if you get them in the jar, rather than trying to lift them fruitlessly from the sieve. With the spoon. Whoop. Oh, that's successful. There you go. Oh no, I dropped one. Oh well. Um, a good pinch of salt seasoning. Very important in food, of course. Unseasoned food doesn't taste very good. So a good bit of salt and plenty of olive oil. You could also add other things like tahini, uh, very traditional cool. in hummus. I know some people, Rosa included, don't like tahini at all. Um, so tahini, of course, is a like blended sesame seed paste. Um, so what I'm going to add instead of tahini with this one, um, I'm actually going to add, let me bear with me a second while I find it. There we go. I have got here some sesame oil, toasted sesame oil. So, which has a completely oh, different flavor. Delicious. Toasted sesame oil and raw sesame oil are completely different flavors. Um, so play around with them. Um, some people like one or not the other, but you know, play around with them, experiment, have a go. Oh, you know what else I'm gonna put in there? How could I forget? Is a little squeeze of lemon juice. Lemon. Yes. <laughs> Always want to make sure that you've got a bit of a Okay, in your I'm, food. I'm getting at it for not liking tahini by me and Bogod. <laughs> so, I, do you know what? You'd actually be really proud of me because I do actually, I am going on a journey towards um, tahini being in my life. Oh, um, good. Yep. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a gradual process, though. Exactly. Um, you know, um, and yeah. Take so it, I wouldn't take it one say day I hate it anymore. No, I take it one day at a time. Anymore. Stay strong. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I basically, I've started weaning myself into tahini hummuses more. Um, yeah. And I'm think, kind think, of obsessed with sabra at the moment, so oh, yeah, I'm getting better. And so soon, I'm gonna be fine. I think. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now, before I put this on to blend, this is obviously going to make quite a lot of noise. So whilst that's blending, do you want to give us a little update on Chidi and what's happening there? I was just thinking the exact same. Amazing. Thing. So I'm going to put this on. If you want to put me on mute for now. I'm muting you. Okay. <laughs> oh, I feel quite bad disturbing him because he's sleeping. But here he is. Hello. Curled up on his bed. Hi. Hello. He's very cosy, um, and what he tends to be doing most of the day is spending about half an hour running around like crazy, and then half an hour like this. 
and then rotating again because he just gets so exhausted from all the excitement. You're right there, Ozzy. I am. I have done the classic blunder of overfilling the jug, so it's going to take a little bit longer. If you do that, just make sure you go around with the spatula, give it a scrape. I mean, the top looks like hummus. It's just the bottom hasn't quite mixed in yet because I've overfilled it. Try to be a bit overzealous, but I've got a small, I've got a small blender at the moment here. This is, I think, it's, it's actually my brother's um, one that he makes for smoothies, so it might taste weird for the next couple of days. Sorry, Jake, but there you go. <laughs> a hummus smoothie—that's an interesting thing. I've never done hummus, which could be interesting. Um, yeah, I think having a good blender is very important in the in a kitchen because not only do you need it for hummus, but also falafel. Very important. Absolutely, yeah, for uh, for falafel, and it's also just a really handy. Like, I understand a lot of people don't have them, um, but I'd say it's one one of the very few kitchen gadgets that I think is pretty indispensable in the kitchen. Um. Hello. I'll just put myself on solo for a minute. There he is, hello. He's so tiny. So cute. How's the, how's it coming along? Um. I'm having troubles because I've filled it too much. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, it is coming, but not as quickly as I would have liked it. But it is coming. Bear with me. Okay. Um, have we had any 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 uh, people confessing to mistakes they've done? No, Mia. I know you're there. <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell us about your worst cooking disaster right now. Oh, he's spread out all over me. Um, and also I've got a new old t-shirt on, um, vintage LJY, but I, I only joined in 2013, so I don't have this one, but Mars very kindly dropped me around a massive bag full of old LJY merch. So you're going to be seeing a lot of it now. Whoop, whoop. For me, Yeah, which is nice. Do you, do you have this t-shirt, Ozzy? uh i don't know which you know what i've got i have so many ljy t-shirts i honestly have lost track um from over the years let's get this out there beautiful bright orange color from the carrots and slightly spiced flavor from the cumin um you really again it's almost like it's very difficult to go wrong oh that looks good um you, you know, you can really play around the flavors, do what you want. Um, you'd have a delicious, you'd, you could stop right here basically and you could just have, you know, have some carrots and cucumbers or other flatbreads to, to kind of just dip into it. And you could be perfectly content with that because I know I would be, that tastes delicious. Um, but yeah, like again, it's with cooking, like experiment, try things out. Um, you know, you can use recipes as guidelines, of course. And if you're trying coming out for the first time, it always helps to have a reference, but um, you know, half the fun is, is kind of just playing around with it for yourself and, uh, and seeing what you like, what you don't like, what works, what doesn't work. And everyone's kitchen is different, of course, so everyone's oven is different as well. Um, that granola is looking pretty good. So I'm just going to pull that out now. Perfect timing. Ooh. Bring that over okay, to wait, where, where can you have a look? Uh, oh. If you want to bring it over to the main camera. Oh. So it's kind of, you see how it's kind of clumped up like this a bit. That granola yeah. at the moment, because it's still quite hot, it's it's um, it's just come out of the oven, obviously. It's it's still a little bit like, it feels a bit soft, but as you leave it out to cool and air dry, it will it will kind of become firm and hard and you get that crunch. Um, and it's got that kind of, yeah, it's a savory, it's a savory mm -hmm. granola. So it's like what you have in your, in your yogurt in the morning, but savory, obviously. Um, Did you trim nice. your beard, Ozzy? I did a little bit. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed. Jeez, very nice. I, I felt being with uh, with stuff vaguely returning back to, to normal. <laughs> I, I figure I should be time. somewhat presentable. Yeah. Yeah, um, I want another now, haircut, so I don't know whether to get Fran to do it or to um, wait until they reopen. I think it's ris risky to get get it done at home, like I did. I mean, I just went for a straight this buzz way. cut, so it's not that big a deal, but. 
Quite I don't easy. know. Ris risky if you're, if you're getting it styled. If you're getting it cut, fine. If you're getting it styled, probably just wait. Um, right. So what I'm doing now is I'm just giving the uh, mixer a little rinse out. <coughs> oh, a bit of granola stuck in my throat there. I think. Mia wants like to know my worst cooking disaster, so I'll have a think for her. <laughs> I've got a few um, to choose from. So like I said earlier, I've got the beetroot here, obviously, and whatever you, whatever vegetables you use, it's fine. Um, you always want the beetroot to go last. So I don't mind that that's still got a bit of carrot on it because that will, like, mix in fine with the beetroot. What you don't want to do is put the beetroot in first because I'll, sh I'll show you what will happen um, if you do. I mean, you, you can put it in, but it means you'll have to clean it out. So I will... Let's think about this tactically. I don't want to overfill it. I don't want to overfill it, but I do want to get a good amount in there. Um, so put a bit of beetroot and some chickpeas. No, it's easier with my hands. Whoa. Um. Ozzy, tell me when we need a break and I will tell yep. everyone about my worst cooking disaster. Oh, good God. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, you can do that while I bend this up, actually. Yeah. Exciting. Are you just adding everything the same apart from beetroot? Or do you use different um, herbs or spices? Um, wow. So for this beetroot one, a, a, mint, uh, a herb that goes well with beetroot is mint. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people don't know that, but it, it really, I think it goes very, very well with it. Especially in like salads as well. If you ever have a beetroot in a salad, it always goes really well with mint. Um, so I've got a little bit of mint that's just growing on the windowsill. Let me just pick some off. Um, it's really subtle. I don't want to overpower it. Mint can be one of those things that if you put too much in, it can, funnily enough, taste like toothpaste. Um, so be quite sparing with it, but it's nice to just have a little bit in there. <laughs> Chidi keeps biting me. It's very oh, distracting. No. Bad now kitty. he's licking my finger. <laughs> oh, I'm looking. Oh, I can see him. Oh, he yeah. looks like um, looks like a toothless from <laughs> Australian Dragon. <laughs> so funny! Stop biting me. <laughs> really cat. Yeah, I'm definitely more of a cat person than a dog person. I must say. As much as I love dogs, cats are just they they they've just picked it for me. I think. Um. So yeah, beetroot, mint, chickpeas. Same. Olive oil. Comment below if you're a cat or dog person, but I will be offended <laughs> if you've seen Chidi and now aren't just so in love with him. He is a very handsome boy, I'll give him that. Uh, of course, clove of garlic, and this one I will put a bit of tahini in. Sorry, Rosa, but. It's okay, I'm learning. It's all part of the healing process, you know. I'm learning. Bit of tahini there. I've, yeah, yeah, I've just done a bit at a time. Small of course, of course. Things. Exactly, exactly. Can't do it all at once. Um, a spoon. You need just half a spoonful. Kind of again, it's hummus. You can't really go wrong. You put in an amount, and if it needs more, it needs more. So that's about half a teaspoon. It is quite strong, so I don't want to overdo it. I think the thing I think the thing that might put you off with tahini is the fact that it's it's quite bitter. And you'll you'll mm. tend to find that in a lot of um a lot of like countries where where the weather is hotter um a lot of their cuisine and a lot of the drinks they have uh, tend to be on the more bitter side um so especially in the mediterranean a lot of the drinks they have a lot of like the cocktails they might make are always on the bitter side um and it just it's something that i think i don't know it must be is it because it's good to have yeah like more salt i, I think know. i think what it is is, is is bitter bitter drinks and bitter foods make you want to drink water more so you might forget to like drink water if you're in a hotter climate I think. Oh, but I don't they really want know. you to be drinking more, so obviously, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to blend this up. So if you want to okay. talk us through your, uh, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Um, okay. Well, Yoni wants to say, surely it can't be any worse than the Mushinoki, which was horrendous. Um, but the other thing that came to my mind was when I was a student, which was also a disaster. Me and my housemates thought it'd be a good idea to try and make a quinoa pizza um, because, like, we had saw it in a deliciously yellow recipe or something. Um, it was a mistake. It 
looked awful. It came out the oven and it was quite crispy and burnt. And they were so small as well. It was like one mouthful. <laughs> and and then we couldn't get it even off because it was stuck to the bottom of the pan or tray. And then we like were scraping it off and then it just fell on the floor. Uh, so I feel like it was a disaster because we couldn't eat it, but also because it was literally, it was that bad as well. So it was kind of two things at once. Um, that was quite embarrassing, to be honest. So now that I've shared the gnocchi and the <laughs> quinoa pizza, um, please do... Um, share your disasters below. Ozzy, I can't hear you. Maybe he's choosing to. Oh, it looks good. It's a really nice colour. I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, is that Oh, better? hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Ah, oh, okay. What happened there? So. I don't know. I think I... Uh... Oh, things about to run out of battery. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh... The beetroot looks cool. Yeah, it looks very cool. Um, let me know if it if it blocks out again. Just give just give me a shout. Um, put it on track. Okay, Look. sounds good. How is it? Is it blended well? Yeah, I've just added a top. Oh, you just cut out again. What have you added? Ooh. Anticipation. Am I going to have to talk everyone through the rest of the recipe? <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm doing. It, to be fair, it wouldn't be right if we ran a live stream without a technical difficulty. So. Am I unmuting you? Remove, remove you. What's that? What's that? Yes. <laughs> Does someone want to tell a joke in the comments to pass the time? I've muted him apparently. I can't unmute you because you've chosen to mute yourself and your mic isn't connected. Yeah. There you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I switched. I switched to my backup. Okay. Well, I put everything to charge last night, but apparently it didn't take. So there you go. Uh, anyway, right? You still hear me over here? Yeah, you're okay. good. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, um, just like the carrot one, I added just a touch of water, um, which is just going to help with the consistency of it. You can see the mess that this is making. This is why you do the beetroot last. I'm just gonna bear with me whilst I blend this up once more. I'm, I'm scared to mute you, but it sounds awful. <laughs> you try, try muting it, try muting it. Okay, okay. There we go. Hello. Look, it's beetroot hummus. Looks tasty, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. You're looking forward to dinner, GD. You're going hummus. Okay, are you done? I am. I am very much done. Oh, that looks good. Do you ever do you add garnish to your hummus at the end? Because quite often I keep I keep like a few chickpeas spare to like put at the top to just make it look cool. Yeah, I mean you can you can add whatever you want to it. Um, I'm gonna be I'll show you once we get it close enough. Um, what I'm just gonna do is Oh, yeah. you're cutting out a bit. Oh yeah. Um, hmm. 
Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Uh, what, what, yeah, what's a stream without a technical difficulty? Um, <laughs> well, really, now that I've got my hummus, 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 humai, I don't know what the plural for hummus is. Hummuses. Hummuses, hummus, yeah. Hummus, hummusot. Hummusot. Now I've got my hummusot done. Um, I've just got a pan on my stove that is going to preheat. I've got my granola there. I've got a pan that is just going to preheat and get nice and hot. Um, and if you want to come over to the Aussie cam, what I'm going to be doing now is the dough that we made earlier. I'm just going to be rolling it out nice and thin. I'm not going to lie. I completely forgot about the dough. <laughs> <laughs> We've given, it, we've given it time to rest and start absorbing some of that water. So I'm just going to flat, lightly flour my work surface. I've got about half the dough here. Of course, I'm just doing this for show, so you, you want to do all of it. And you, you're going to go in batches when you're doing this at home, just because there's going to be quite a lot. Um, but obviously, with a flatbread, you need to roll it out nice and flat. So the shape of it isn't that important, but it's very important that it's all the same thickness so that it cooks at the same time. So I want that nice and flat. Again, this was the dough that we needed earlier with a strong flour as opposed to plain flour. Um, bit of oil, baking powder, and salt. So very plain, very simple, and very delicious to dip in some lovely vegetable hummus, which we have got. Um, Nice and thin. You can see that is beautifully thin over there. Uh, it doesn't, I can't really show on camera, but it, I'm holding up so I can actually see the light through it. It's that thin, it's paper thin. Mm. Um, see that nice and light. And then whilst I'm waiting for this pan to heat up, we can getting this pomegranate done. So that is what a pomegranate looks like inside, for those of you who didn't know. Um, the word for pomegranate, do you know the word? Do you know the word in Ivorit for pomegranate? Hello? Oh, um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so the word for pomegranate is, is Rimon, which um, translates also as uh, the word for grenade, because apparently it looks like one, um, as in the grenade that you chuck and it explodes when you're in a battle or whatever, and you're a soldier. Um, wow, the word for grenade is exactly the same word for the word for um, for for pomegranate. And if you ever, or if you're a fan of your cocktails, you might know a type of syrup called grenadine, um, which oh, yeah. is basically pomegranate. Or your mocktails. Or your mocktail, or of under eighteen. Always, always mocktail responsibly. Um, has grenadine in it, which is a syrup made from pomegranates, which of course also has the grenade part in it. Um, so it's kind of it kind of crosses a few oh, different wow. languages. Yeah, oh, that's really um, interesting. So it kind of crosses a few different languages. Um, I think it's quite. It's just a little interesting story. I, I didn't. I didn't really realise until. Uh, uh, until fairly recently, like just how prevalent that is, um, a lot of a lot of people apparently confuse that with a grenade. So I suppose if you rip the top off and throw it, then yeah. Um, my pan for my bread is now nice and hot. So if you want to come over to the main camera, please, Rosa. Indeed. So I've got that in there. Ooh. My pan is, is pretty much smoking, which is fine. Which is what I want. I've got my pomegranates there, which I would do more of if I had a bit more time, but that's fine. That's all I need for one. And I've got my main plate here. So I'm going to start, whilst my bread is just cooking in the background, I'm going to start plating up on the Aussie can. Uh, you want to switch over to the Aussie can there, Rosa? Yeah. So you're just leaving that? Yeah, I'm just going to leave that for a moment. And... This really, like, you want to let those colours just kind of, like, be rustic, you know. So it's a plate that you kind of dig in. Don't think about it too much. Um, it really is a plate that you can kind of just dig in. 
lots of different things into and have lots of different colors and really express the different ingredients you got in there. Are you going to take some professional photos again? So of when course. I post the recipe. Yay. Um, so you can give that a little, little swirl around like that, mix all the colors in. So you've got the different colors, like a ripple effect. Um, with a plate like this, where you've got so few components, it really is about the presentation and the garnish. I'm going to flip, I've just flipped my bread now, so if you want to come to the main, see it there, looking delicious, that will dunk perfectly into our nice, uh, nice hummus. So now all you've got to focus on is the garnish, making it look nice. Of course, the first bite is always with the eye, so we always want to make our dishes. Have you tried it? I have, and they are all delicious. I love, I, I love the beach one especially. Um, it's really got that sweetness. Um, and a little bit of a savoury granola just going over the top, which will just bring a nice crunch. Oh, a whole plate of hummus, amazing. A whole plate of it. This is something I'd slap down in front of a few people and, you know, a few, a few different raw veggies or other fret layers, crackers, that kind of stuff. You can really go to town on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's hummus and dip, you can't really go wrong again. You put anything you want. Um, so I've got my nice lovely flatbread ready to go here. I'm just gonna give that a little fold. Put that on the side, get that ready. Um, sprinkle over some pomegranate seeds for a bit of color. And this again, like you really go to town with the presentation with what you garnish it with. There's no real wrong answers here. Um, you know, spring onions are a really nice addition as well. If you want a bit of onioniness or anything you want, really. Again, like it's, it's totally personal. It's up to you. It's lovely flex of colour. And I think also a bit of mint because I use some in the beetroot, which would be a really nice contrast, a bit of green to the top. Um, and also use Breaks here and there, a bit of colour. Almost looks like a Salvador Dali painting, or a Jackson Pollock, not Salvador Dali, what about that? Jackson Pollock painting. For those of you who are art buffs, you know what I'm talking about. Zip. Wow. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that, I don't know. Oh, that old thing. That old chestnut, there you go. Maybe Incredible. Extra chickpeas oh, on top. Yes, like I said, I love it. And a drizzle of olive oil. Wow. Oh, my God. Ozzy, I wish you didn't live so far away from me right now. <laughs> this well, isn't go. cool. I want it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh yeah. So we've got wow. our almost plate there. I'll get some proper photos done, but um, the colours are so, I mean, it doesn't really show on the camera as well, but the, the colours from where I'm standing are so so vivid, such a bright purple so and rich. a nice orange there, contrast with the green and the crunch of the granola and the pomegranate seeds. Oh, I'm dying to put that in my mouth. That sounds, that absolutely looks amazing. Wow, amazing. Oh my god! Thank you so much. And the flatbread seemed quite easy to do. Very like right, so think. simple, so simple. It's it, the only thing is you got to make sure your pan is super super hot. Um, super hot. Thing. So if you have an extractor pan, use it when you're when you're cooking it because you will need it. Is it that, really like, easy to burn it, or is it? Okay? Um, I mean, as long as you keep an eye on it, you 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 do want a bit of colour on it. So you can see my one's got a little bit, yeah, of, it's a little bit, bit of char. char on it, which is quite yeah. nice. Adds adds a nice flavour to it. Um. But yeah, I mean, just keep an eye on it. Don't, you know, obviously don't let it go completely burnt, but um, if you get a bit of colour on it, you can get away with it. So, yeah, that's I pretty think much I it. Am, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to try that um, myself, to be honest. Yeah, that I mean, totally, good. like, give it a go. Try it with different vegetables as well. Like, don't just stick to feature and carrot and try it with, you know, what we talked about earlier, like onions or peppers or anything you want, really. Just give it a try. Like, that's the thing. Is, is the I, Yeah, stuff. red onion would be nice. Yeah, roasted, any kind, of, any kind of roasted vegetables, but yeah, give it a try because hummus is such a great 
vehicle for different flavors. So honestly, whatever, whatever works for you. Thank you so much. That's Quite amazing. Right. And if anyone tries it at home, they've got to send us the pictures, okay? Please do, yeah. Um, make them colourful. Make them colourful and make them look great. Because they. Because so... I, I might be sending in my own photos to myself because I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, uh, well, right. I think we'll leave it there then. That was amazing. Awesome. And tomorrow at 2 p.m. we'll be back here but with... Um, uh, rabbi ready to do 10 minutes of Torah which is a new Friday pre-Shabbat initiative that we're doing which is cool. yeah very nice so if we say goodbye to Mr. Chi hi oh, so cute hey buddy hey bye oh, bye. Hey. <laughs> hey there hey, <laughs> hey thank you so much Ozzy that's alright I'll see you guys around have a good one. Stay Bye. safe. Stay well. Keep cooking. Always cook. Yes, always. <laughs> Bye. Bye.